All right, I think we'll get started. It's just a small demo about things that you have already studied, right? So this is a transmission line, all right? In specific, it's a kind of a transmission line, all right? So this particular one is a coaxial cable, all right? And there are many, many kinds of coaxial cable that you can find in the market. This is just one version of them, right? So it has, you know, a connector at the center and a connector around it, I mean, a, a, a conductor in the center and a conductor around it. So it's a straight conductor in the center and then a braided conductor around it. And the ends are having some kind of a connector. These are SMA connectors, sub-miniaturized version A, SMA connectors that can go into some devices which can probe RF, okay? So here we are having a specific cable, all right? So I believe this is RG136, okay? So it is radio guide, one th there are number of uh, coaxial cables that you can buy depending on the application. This particular one, goes you know up to some 500 megahertz to maybe 600 700 megahertz with reasonable losses okay so this is a typical transmission line okay there are also other things that we have so i have an uh, different cable over here it's an rg58 cable so this is a 50 ohm characteristic impedance cable this is also a 50 ohm characteristic impedance cable they come in different lengths all right different colors, different uh, composition. For example, the center could be made up of copper or it could be made up of copper coated steel or it could be braided with aluminum on the top. The jacket material could be different in different companies. So it just depends, all right. So these are also very rigid. You cannot bend them, you know, with very short radii. There are guidelines for how much you can bend them and how much you cannot bend them and all that, okay. So these are some short stubs of cables that I thought I'll come and show you. But most of you may have set-top box in your houses. You must have seen a coaxial cable in your houses. That particular one is known as an RG6 cable, okay, radio guide 6. And the good thing about that cable is it's fat, so it's less lossy, all right. And uh, it goes up to 3 gigahertz. Okay, up to 3 gigahertz. So that's a much better cable than what we have here. These are short stubs, all right. So what I'll do is, there are more patch cards over here, all right. This particular connector is known as an SMA connector, all right. And this is what you will commonly notice in microwave labs, etc. okay. Now what I'll do is, I'll, I'll show you some specifications of these cables first. Then I'll show you where these cables are connected all right, and then I'll show you the specification of the machine to which it is connected, all right, how to read a data sheet and all that. And then we'll see how it solidifies what we have learnt in the class, okay. So I'll first start with cables, okay. I'm opening from, for some common cables, RG58 is a very common cable that, uh, you know, I learnt to use maybe when I was beginning to read this, okay. So let's have a look at uh, typical specifications of your so if you look over here, impedance Z0, this is the characteristic impedance of the cable, all right. So there are different varieties, RG58, 58A, 58B, 58C, etc. So all of them have a nominal impedance of about 50 ohms, so 53.5, 52, 53.5, 50 ohms, etc. These are some nominal impedances. So the dielectric material in all of them is solid polyethylene is what is given, all right. So this is the material between the center and the outer braided. I'll show you how the structure looks. I cannot cut this cable, but I'll show you how uh, the picture of what it would look like. Time delay, nanoseconds per feet, using some uh, combination of uh, SI and imperial units, doesn't matter. If the manufacturer is from, uh, you know, English countries, then you'll have nanoseconds per feet, all right. So also in US, it's pretty common to use uh, feet, etc. but doesn't matter. Right. So time delay is 1.5 nanoseconds per feet and then they give you something known as propagation velocity below that percentage of C. Here it says that it's almost 66 percent, okay. So typical cables have velocities of up to 2 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. This is the velocity. 
Okay. So, the first class we said that no signal will travel at infinite velocities. The upper limit is the speed of light 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. And in most of these uh, cables which operate at say gigahertz frequencies, the propagation velocity is 66 percent the speed of light seems to be very common. right? Maybe you can pick up varieties of cables 66 percent the speed of light is about 2 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Okay. Now, there are also other things which will solidify what we have seen in the class. For example, capacitance is measured in picofarads per foot. We said that uh, it is a distributed parameters in the first few lectures, all right. It is given as 28.8 picofarads per foot. Now, I think you sh it should be clear to you that this is how the specifications are given. It is a distributed parameter. So, the longer you buy, the more the capacitance you will be adding per foot. Right. So, some outside dimensions and we also did you know dB calculations for input, output, powers, relative power etcetera. So, it tells you how much of loss you are going to be having in your transmission line. Here it says that it is about 11.7 dB per foot, but we have to take all these things with a pinch of salt. This may be the best loss or this may be the worst loss. It cannot be the worst loss because it is only 11 dB. So, maybe it is somewhere in between. Okay, we will see more details later okay. and it says maximum, oh okay. So, it tells the dB per foot it has 400 megahertz okay. at 400 megahertz about 11.7 dB decibels per foot. You can always go back use our formula and try to calculate 10 log to the base 10 output power by input power is equal to minus 11 dB. How much is the ratio of V out to V in? You can make a calculation right from the notes. Maximum voltage that you can apply is absurdly high 1900 volts okay. and the shield that is the outer conductor that you are having all right and also to provi provide it insulation from external electric field. So, this outer braided conductor is I mean it is a braided conductor it is not a you know film or something like that that is what that is the detail that is given and then there is some tidbits of information. If you see here the RG58 cable is most often used for thin internet all right. When the maximum length is about 185 meters. Now, this is a piece of information that you may not have uh, been aware of okay. So, it is used for thin internet okay. When you know the maximum length required is about 185 meters of course right. Nowadays, we have Wi-Fi cell phones and all that. But you know if you want to have a wired internet connection this could have been a not this particular RG58 would have been a candidate this is a different one I think it is 319 or something all right. So, you could also have different connectors at the end you could have a BNC connector for low frequencies you could have different types of connectors depending upon the application okay. So, <coughs> this is how the cross section looks because I could not cut these wires I just wanted to show you that there is an outer part all right. And then there is a braided conductor inside and there are different cables we saw RG58, AB etcetera. Some of the specifications could be slightly different because of the materials and the way they are being used. For example, I can see clearly that the outer braided part is copper in the first one all right and it is aluminum or maybe steel I do not know all right looks like aluminum. And then there is a dielectric which is polyethylene in this case. And then there is a core which is again copper this is what is the structure. So, the central part of the wire is connected to the pin over here which is going to carry a signal and the outer one is going to behave like a ground okay. So, these connectors are just pressed and crimped that is it okay. So, the outer part has to make contact with the outer uh, copper thing that is uh, present over here and the center part has to make contact with the center male part over here that is all. Okay. So, again this is a 50 ohm connector I mean 50 ohm cable right. So, there are many many more things that one can read right. <coughs> so, I wanted to just put this also this is a very good document because it also gives you uh, some uh, limitations about what can be done what cannot be done RG58 cabling supports up to 30 nodes maximum distance of 185 uh, meters okay. So, uh, I think this is very interesting. Let us look at some more <coughs> things related to the cables. So, this is another company which makes cables 
RG58 according to the standards. Okay. So it is 52 ohms nominal characteristic impedance. All right. So it also tells you what is the gauge of the solid core that they are using, what is the diameter of the copper conductor in between, I mean in the center. Okay. So it is saying that 0 0.033 inches, 20 AWG is the gauge of the solid core that is present over there, polyethylene insulation. Now we can understand that there are many commonalities across manufacturers because they are conforming to some kind of a standard. Right. So bare copper braid shield, then they say there is a PVC jacket on the outside to protect that. Right. This is the composition right. and I will just go to some technical specifications. So again solid core polyethylene dielectric between the two conductors, okay. braided outer shield, right. PVC outer jacket material and then let us see something, nominal conductor DCR. Right. So this is 10 ohms per 1000 feet. Again you notice that everything is coming in distributed units, okay. 10 ohms per 1000 feet. This is the typical you know resistance per unit length that you will be having in these cables. Right. 10 ohms per 1000 feet or uh, for the outer shield you know, is 5.5 .5 ohms per uh, 1000 feet. Right. So it is a very tiny amount of resistance depending upon the application. You cannot use it for very, very long uh, you know, connections anyway. So again capacitance, nominal capacitance conductor to shield that is conductor to shield measured across the two conductors with a dielectric in between is again distributed parameter which is 28.5 picofarads per feet. So everything is in distributed parameters and nominal inductance is 0 0.08 microhenry per feet. So these are roughly the range of values you can expect some 100 picofarad capacitance per you know feet per foot all right and you know orders of microhenry per uh, foot all right. This at least that much you should be knowing. You cannot absurdly write Henry, Farad, etc. So these are very tiny values of capacitances and tiny values of inductances. This is just for you to get a feeling for the numbers in actual uh, cables. Nominal characteristic impedance is 52 ohms and then high frequency insertion loss that is output power to input power right, taken in uh, dB. Also you see how it has been given at 1 megahertz. <coughs> it is only 0 0.3 dB per 100 foot, not sure, are you able to see, right. It is only 0 0.3 dB per 100 foot, 10 megahertz 1.1 dB per 100 feet and then at 1 gigahertz it is 14.5 dB per 100 feet. So the lesson here is as you start having higher frequencies going through these cables, the losses will typically become higher. Okay. So this also means that a transmission line which worked for low frequencies need not necessarily work for very high frequencies. Okay. So the general rule is as your frequency increases, the loss increases. That is the general rule that we are seeing over here. Right. Again the delay is 1.5 nanoseconds per foot that means that it is about 66 percent of the speed of light that is 2 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. The voltage that you can give is about 100,400 volts so similar to what we saw with the other manufacturers 1900 volts etc. On top of that uh, you no, know, they give you an operating range between minus 40 and plus 80 degrees centigrade and then on top of that there are some mechanical uh, characteristics, how much you can pull, how much you can bend, all these things could be provided. So these are typical data sheets of uh, you know cables that are available in the market okay. <coughs> and there are some variants right and different variants may have different color jackets to just tell them that you know, yellow color is for this, blue color is for this, black color, it could be like that okay. So I think by now you should be able to at least digest the fact that Many of the transmission lines available in the market for high frequencies indeed indicate you know distributed parameters. Seems like a very common termination uh, impedance or characteristic impedance is about 50 ohms. The ones that you are using for your cable TV RG6 cables have characteristic impedance of 75 ohms, they are not 50 ohms. Okay. So it depends but 50 and 75 ohms are reasonably common. Okay. <coughs> 
So I think there are many more with respect to the cables. If you have time, you can always Google. There are many companies which provide the same information in different ways. In this case, in this case, this is another manufacturer which is uh, giving you, you know, properties. It says that characteristic impedance is 50 plus or minus 3 ohms measured at 20 degrees centigrade. Capacitance of the order of 100 picofarads per meter. I just picked this because it had units in SI. Uh, you know. So, resistance for the inner conductor is about 36.5 ohms per kilometer. All right. So, velocity ratio 66 percent. At this stage, you should at least know what numbers to expect from your uh, you know transmission line okay and things that are available to you when you are buying a transmission line is, is, is these data people give you the velocity factor uh, people give you the uh, impedance per unit I mean characteristic impedance and capacitance inductance per unit length etc okay so I think this is the basics of a cable now what we are going to do is we are going to use these cables, I just picked this up from a lab, uh, but uh, <coughs> the lab has very, very sophisticated instruments. Okay? And one of the instruments that the labs in IIT have is a vector network analyzer. In short, they are known as VNA, okay? vector network analyzer. These are uh, the equipments that are made so I will open one of them as to how it looks. Some people may have seen this and thought that these look like giant oscilloscopes I mean that is that's close to what you know one can guess. So I think in the uh, RF lab in IIT Madras they have a couple of these right. So this is from key side and this is how it looks it is actually a giant machine alright and it costs about 60 lakhs. 60 lakhs all right so that's why i couldn't carry it here and show it because on the way if i dropped it that's it i have to repay for it for the rest of my life and my child would have to also pay it. Okay. so <coughs> so uh, this is how it looks it has some inputs you can see that they have some specific connection types okay so these could be depending on the frequencies or depending upon the availability etc but there are also adapt adapters to go from one type to another type etc. There are adapters which will allow you to do that. So if you see the screen, there are some plots, typically they analyze in these cases S parameters. Okay? So we have not seen about S parameters and we are not going to see about S parameters in this course. In an advanced course in waveguides and antennas, you will be dealing exclusively with S parameters. They measure the S parameters, specifically S11 and S21. Okay. This is what is being shown here with respect to frequency. On the right hand side is something that should be familiar to you which is a Smith's chart. Okay. So you see that there is some display here with the Smith's chart. So the hardware nowadays comes with this ability to plot impedances on a Smith's chart. So you would connect a cable to this, then you would have a device all right, and then maybe you have some termination. So you see on the Smith's chart what is the impedance that is seen. All right. So, it can be used for a variety of purposes, but these are things with very, very high capabilities. Okay. They can go up to maybe 18, 20 gigahertz, okay. whereas the cable that we have is no good for more than even a gigahertz. So, you need to use specific specialized cables for them and these are wonderful equipments, temperature stabilized, etc. This is uh, you know, another equipment from Anritsu which is also a company which just looks like this. I just wanted to give you a feeling for across manufacturers. It also has multiple ports all right port 1, port 2 all right. It also has different connectors and it has Smith chart based plots etc. Okay. So you could connect in theory a transmission line, you could connect some impedances, you could connect say filters, you could connect different things uh, that you want to make for these frequencies and analyze what is going on with, with, with these equipments. Okay. This is also probably equally expensive. Nowadays, <coughs> we are getting something of slightly lower specs, but something which I think really suits uh, studies in uh, universities which are these mini vector network analyzers. So this is a mini vector network analyzer. Okay. So all it does is it takes in some input, it has a transmitter 
which sends out which is your source in our transmission line cores and it has a port for uh, you know receiving the data so it has a receiver and then it has some processing and then it connects to your computer and it has its own dedicated software to show us what's going on so this is all it is some all this big equipment that you saw have extraordinary abilities but this is good enough for most of the day to day work for you know at least for studies and for, and for amateur radio enthusiasts etc this is a very very good piece of equipment to give you the cost comparison i gave you the cost of that to be about 60 lakhs in indian currency all right this is about 500 to 600 us dollars okay it's about 30000 rupees so it's an order of 100 lower than the cost of the big machines so i think for universities which are looking at you know having a curriculum for just doing some demo etc they can always purchase one or two of these and have some experiments going on. So this is a mini vector network analyzer, all right. In particular, the one we have is made by SDR Kits. It's a company I think based in UK, all right. And uh, so this number that they have DG8SAQ uh, is the amateur radio sign for the inventor, all right. So DG8SAQ is uh, you know person's uh, ham radio code. So he's behind the design of this at the core it uh, has some uh, at mega micro microcontroller inside and then it has some circuitry to sample uh, to up convert etc right so this is what it is <coughs> okay i'll quickly go to the part where it shows the circuit we will not be able to make out much other than just understand that it is a uh, you know simpler setup but it's very very handy and very useful gives you detailed instructions about things right? so this is the board that is housed inside this box i don't think we can read circuits just like that but it's to just tell you that it is it is possible you know to make uh, simpler versions of very complicated vector network analyzers that may have poorer specifications but works uh, just fine for most of the practical aspects for us to understand many things about transmission line these kinds of things are good enough so it has an upper frequency range of 1.3 gigahertz that's good enough for us to you know look at most of the uh, transmission line problems so this shows that it has a transmitter and a receiver all right sma connectors which will which are these parts over here right so i think this is good enough and there are now many many more companies there is a mini vna at roughly at the same price so <coughs> i think universities can procure this now what we will do is we will try to use this because i told that these are transmission lines let's just see how it operates and what you can expect and whether we can confirm one or two things what we learned from the class using this right you want to do so this is the smith chart screen of this equipment all right it's a mini vna connected to the computer and they have their own software to run this all right so it provides your smith chart this is something that we have generated on our own all right and all right so now i have nothing connected to this so i'm going to remove these connectors all right so it's an open circuit all right so it's towards the edge now you'll notice that it's a little bit away right it's not right in this place that's because every minute detail will start counting all right when you calibrate these devices if you put something and you calibrate and say that this is open circuit then that real tiny detail matters so when we calibrated this we had this on all right so in practice every single connector and every single thing that you do actually really matters otherwise you will have slightly different results also notice that we are running this for a single frequency because in the class we have not seen multiple frequencies single frequency is all we have done so this is now your open circuit now shall we connect a short circuit so <coughs> So now we are having a plate which will short the inner and the outer conductors, right? 
and if you look carefully there is a red color marker that is appearing on your screen which moved to the extreme uh, left of the smith chart indicating that it is a short circuit okay so these are very simple things now uh, i think you can connect a 50 ohm load remember that once again the connectors have changed all right and this is a 50 ohm load and this uh, tx rx output is rated for 50 ohms okay so it should come at the middle it's all it's right at the middle so it is impedance matched okay so this is what so these are some small things we can do since we are now seeing about the loads we can always connect a transmission line Okay. So, you will connect a SMA cable, cable with an SMA connector, I do not remember what cable this is. <coughs> okay. So, it is open circuit, all right. but you notice that the mark is not exactly over here, because we know that depending on the length of the transmission line, you will traverse around the Smith chart it will go all the way from a short circuit to open circuit at lambda over 2 it will keep repeating we know all that. So, now we have a length of a transmission line that is giving you a position in the Smith chart over there. So, we can estimate only the electrical length we cannot estimate the actual length of the transmission line. Now, just to make it abundantly clear what we can do is we can also add another section of the transmission line to this. So, he is adding a small section to it, Total length. Okay. so he is having a different length, Okay, it went to a different place. So, now it should be clear that depending on the length of the transmission line, all right, you will be traveling you know around in constant VSWR circles, okay. so we are sweeping a constant VSWR circle. We could also go ahead and say that the load can be Okay, you can short it, but shorting will again move in the constant VSW circle. But we can connect a load because that is the load itself, yeah, because it will be impedance matched, it should come to the center, right? Yes, yes. <coughs> if you need any connectors, use this, all right, great, okay. Close. So, impedance matching is uh, not a joke all right and you know we are not doing it in the perfect ways either all right. So, we are having a 50 ohm load and uh, the frequency that we are doing is 100 megahertz, 100 megahertz. it says something else over here. 100 megahertz. Ah, okay. 100 megahertz. So, you know it is somewhere there all right. Suppose I take this load. and connect it directly ah. close to the center. <laughs> Right. You have to believe if I say that it is impedance match close to the r equal to 1 circle, maybe it, we need to calibrate with the exact connector. So, in practice every minor detail will matter, but being the electrical engineer we are, let us deliberately do something. Right. I have a couple of resistors all right, that I have you know braided together, these are 200 ohm uh, resistors, I think these are 200 ohm resistors. Yes. So, in parallel I have connected them, so they should be 50 ohms all right and <coughs> this is supposed to be 200 ohm resistors. So, it should be yeah, connected in parallel and it should be 50 ohms, but 50 ohms at what frequency should be you know. So, usually when you buy 50 ohms for very low frequencies or DC ok. So, now we are connecting this to say 100 megahertz.
What is this? You can continue. Ah. Huh. Yeah, almost there. Yeah, I think it's okay. All right, but it's quite possible that at some other, you can see that it's actually in the lower part of your Smith chart. Maybe some parasitic capacitance is there, so we never know what's going on. Ah, one resistor. Okay. Problem is braiding is easy than unbraiding it. It will give uh, very different because it will be open circuited in the other side. Okay, first of all, nobody will do experiments like this, but you know, for the sake of uh, class demo, I'm doing. But I don't think this would qualify as a research thesis or anything. But you know. It's somewhere else. But you know, these these are all the small things that you can do. Actually, it's a lot of fun having a mini VNA, and then you can do a lot of things. There was something we did with open circuit and short circuit, right? Yes. Okay. So, currently, I think the transmission line is open circuited. All right. This was a question that was asked here. I want to determine the characteristic impedance of this open circuited ones. All right, and then you have to find out the impedance. So, how do, uh, but you can notice that it is not on the horizontal axis, it is having a small amount of uh, you know inductance. So, I want to get the, yeah. So, it gives me an impedance of uh, 234.45 milli ohms plus J 11.482 ohms. So, this will be our short circuit impedance that you will see. So, this is Z O C, right. And then we can connect the short circuit. Yeah, this is open. Yeah, you could, you could, yeah, you could take these values and calculate a square root. It is okay, I think. It is fine, it is fine. But the important thing is, your characteristic impedance for open and short are supposed to have only like J, Z naught, tan, beta L. It is not supposed to have a real part at all. But in practice, you get a tiny real part, but the imaginary part is much larger than the real part. All right. So, you will always end up with some tiny real part. Now, it is a short circuit. All right. It moves to the diametrically opposite point, and if I wanted to measure the impedance again, you know, the imaginary part is much higher than the real part. Okay, so then you can, you know, use this for a number of other things. People using for antennas, waveguide studies exclusively, you know, use this VNA. I think now you have a feeling that what you are studying can be, you know, converted to some simple experiments, and you would be able to do them. So with that, I think we'll stop. Next class, we will jump to the next topic, which is going to be transmission and reception in the case where you do not have any wires.